The camera gear I'm testing in this video was provided by today's sponsor, MPB. Check out the link in the description for MPB's full range of used photo and video gear. I've somehow notched the camera into manual focus. And I can't get it off. Courtney Victoria, an Olympus OM5, and a return to South Wales. A few weeks ago, I asked you guys for your lightweight travel camera kit recommendations for long days out doing photography. And this is what you came up with the Olympus OM5 and the 12 to 100 F4 Pro lens. So we're gonna further explore this area today and see what images we can take with this camera. Crikey. The OM5 has 6.5 to 7.5 stops of image stabilization depending on which lens you're using, which means that I can ditch the tripod for once and uh, go handheld, not have to worry too much about my shaky hands. My first instinct was to photograph this waterfall from here face on and as impressive as it is it's lacking something I feel as though I want to really capture the effect of all of this water coming down and cascading through these rocks and so I want to get closer to it and low to the ground so I have a feeling that I need to go over there And I was right, crossing to the other side of the stream allowed me to get closer to the fall and play with some low angles, with a bit more room to set up safely. This cascade is absolutely phenomenal. I think I've got a really, really nice shot here that I'm really happy with, but I do wish I had an ultra wide lens with me just to capture more of this water coming downstream through these rocks towards the camera. That's Karen, by the way. She's uh, currently commandeering the GoPro and she's in charge of uh, making sure I don't break this and that I don't fall in any waterfalls or streams today. You are never too old to hold your mum's hand. Although I'm a clumsy disaster crossing streams, I can safely say that I can successfully hike without assistance. The waterfalls on this trail are absolutely fantastic. Look at this, it's just wonderful. I love the way the water is coming around this corner and going downstream. And the water is actually hitting all the rocks as it goes and it's creating like this glugging sound that to me sounds like muffled club music. So we've got a bit of a beat going on up here. Bit of a bit of a dance, waterfall dance beat going on. Although I like this water that's going downstream, when I go wide to capture that and add that in with the waterfall in the back, I feel like we've got a lot of empty and unnecessary space here with this grassy bank so I'm going to cut that out and I'm just going to focus on this fall and this rock in the bottom of the image where you get a glimpse of that water coming around it and shooting off out of the bottom of the image.
So I figured out the lens manual focus problem. Turns out this lens has a manual focus clutch ring. So it slides back and forth, it slides forwards for autofocus and backwards for manual focus only. And I clearly had accidentally slid it backwards while popping my camera into my bag or taking it out. So problem solved. Every day is a school day. We're off on a hike. It's been a while. We better limber up, really. The weather was forecast for medium to high cloud, which wasn't the case, as we found ourselves walking up into it very quickly. This hiking trail has some absolutely beautiful views of a lake down below. It's a real hidden gem. Hidden because you can't see a thing. We continued for a bit, but as the cloud and rain came in further, we realised there was more chance of getting lost in the cloud than there was taking epic landscape shots. Typical. I've been going through a bit of a landscape photography plateau over the past few months and I'm trying to find ways to break from it. And sometimes I do wonder if carrying heavier gear puts me off from wanting to do longer days or hikes, especially if that includes carrying filming gear as well. Photography plateaus happen, we all go through them at some point, but I do want to switch things up and try and rekindle that excitement for landscape photography again, and not photograph waterfalls or as many waterfalls because I've been doing that a lot this year and it is starting to feel a bit samey. Hence why we tried to hike in this video to do something different, but it was just the case of right gear, wrong timing. I didn't plan on photographing waterfalls during this trip, but seeing as we are in waterfall country, they are a great backup plan. I'm a bit hesitant though because waterfall photography for me is becoming a bit too comfortable. It's almost like muscle memory. It, I don't think it's really challenging me enough these days. And being comfortable in your photography I don't think is always a great thing. I don't feel as though I'm really pushing myself and growing my skills. And so in 2024 I really want to find some new challenges and rekindle that passion for landscape photography and maybe step away from the waterfalls for a little bit but we're definitely gonna give it one last hurrah today. Now don't be deceived by the OM5 just because it's so tiny you may think it may lack in particular features that larger pro cameras have but actually it does have a few advanced features such as focus stacking you've got an ND filter built in up to four stops and you also have the option of high res images up to 50 megapixels handheld and I believe 80 megapixels on a tripod. So if you need those functions, they are there, which is fantastic. The only gripes that I have with this camera so far is that the menu system is a bit of a pain in the ass to navigate and the grip. And these are things that you would probably get used to the more that you used it. But I have managed to bruise my hand as I'm resting the corner of the camera into the palm there by my thumb. <laughs> I would probably trade in a slightly bigger camera body, a tiny bit more weight for a bigger grip so it's a bit more comfortable, perhaps like the OM-1 and 
I guess I am used to really chunky Nikon grips. So uh, yeah, this corner is giving me a bit of discomfort. getting on with this camera I can see myself getting a smaller lighter camera like this in the future for longer days out and more adventure type photography when this is in my camera bag my bag feels more like a day pack rather than a heavy camera bag full of gear big thanks to MPB for sponsoring today's video and for letting me test out the OM5 MPB is the largest global platform to buy, sell and trade in your used video and photo kits. Their circular model sees hundreds and thousands of cameras, lenses, any sort of video and photo equipment that you can think of, put back into the hands of creatives and kept out of landfill. Kit costs around a third less in comparison to buying new on NPB and all of the photos that you see on the site is the actual product that you'll be buying so you know exactly what it is that you're getting. You can choose from various cosmetic conditions and previous use, items listed from well used to like new and shut accounts are displayed so you can buy with confidence. Everything comes with a six month warranty, so you've got plenty of time to get to know your new bit of kit. I use MPB because the service is just so hassle free and easy. So I'll leave the link for MPB in the description box down below if you want to go check it out. Perfect time of year as Christmas is coming up, so let me know what it is that you're itching to buy to put into your camera bag. Right, everybody say goodbye to the Welsh waterfalls. Goodbye, Welsh waterfalls. Goodbye. Goodbye. Clearly we were supposed to visit here one more time, but I think this is definitely confirmed in my mind that I want to do something different and have some fresh challenges next year. So I'm looking forward to that. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I'll, uh, I'll see you next time. Coffee? Yeah, let's, let's go get coffee.